Hey guys, just a quick one today. I want to share the ideas that I have for updates that Tesla should consider making to their software on the Model Y. And these are probably applicable to the Model 3 as well. So hopefully by the time you watch this, some of these are already in place. As I must start by saying the quality and the frequency of updates that Tesla has been rolling out to my car since I bought it less than six months ago has really been amazing. So I'm fairly certain that at least a few of these have a decent chance of actually being done sometime. Uh, if you've seen this sort of thing that I talk about on this channel and you wouldn't mind seeing updates from me, please hit subscribe and the bell notification icon. Number one, individual door controls for child locks. Uh, here's a newer Audi Q8. It's got physical buttons for rear door child locks, which prevent your child from opening the door and causing an unsafe situation. These buttons on the Audi are illuminated, so I know with a quick glance if it's activated or not. And most importantly, I can engage just the side that my kid's car seat is on preventing adults on the other side from feeling locked in and having to wait for someone to open their door from the outside. Uh, on the Tesla, it's bad enough that this feature is relegated to a sub-menu in the touchscreen. Uh, that's just part of how things work with the Model 3 and the Model Y, but it would at least improve the situation if the child lock could have individual controls for left and right doors. Number two, one-touch dialing and setting of favorites. Uh, the call my most commonly called person is not so easy in this car. There is a favorites list, but I have no idea how to get people into that list, which might just be an Android problem. I think it works better with iPhone. Uh, but if you can teach me how to do that, it would be appreciated in the comments section. But even then, there should be a shortcut gesture swipe or something like that. Uh, like for example, if you wanna navigate to home, there's this awesome trick where you swipe the destination search bar and right away it's navigating to home or work, whatever you set it to. With this phone, they have this weird Easter egg where if you hold down the phone icon, it will switch into an old school looking uh, handset contraption and the text will change to Ahoy Hoy, which is I think what I heard Alexander Graham Bell figured that we would say when we pick up the phone. So that's a cute Easter egg, sure, but I just think a long press or a swipe should call the number of my choosing. Number three, let me reconfigure the screen. So Tesla seems to take an Apple iOS approach rather than an Android approach when it comes to the screen, which is the main way of how you interact with the car. Uh, they've obviously gone to great lengths to optimize things and put safety first. Some of us consider ourselves to be power users though, and, and we get why Tesla's designers made their choices, but we want to tailor things like we have done on our smartphones and on our computers. Uh, and I think Tesla should let us. Here's a couple of tweaks I would make personally if I could. Uh, a, the power meter should be more salient. It actually affects my braking. Uh, so you have this power meter and there is a, a center point which is not marked. And as the bar grows from the center to the right, that is your power draw from the batteries and, and that's what helps you accelerate. On the Model S and the X, they have a dial for this and it shows you in kilowatts how much power you're drawing. And as it grows to the left, uh, this time in black rather than green, this is the regenerative braking rate. So uh, that happens when you get off the accelerator. Now, when you have these dots on, on the left side or the right side, that suggests that the power and the regen will be limited to stay within the solid section of the line uh, on account of maybe your batteries are too cold uh, and other things can cause that as well, but usually it's due to temperature. So I'm fine with minimalism, but this power bar is a little too subtle for me. I want to see it bigger, maybe like a quarter of an inch or half an inch instead of the thin line that it is now. The second thing I would customize is a mini consumption graph, like on the Model S dash in the, in the binnacle. Uh, this whole left-hand area is actually not the best used space for many driving situations. Uh, why do I need to see a miniature version of my car from behind as the computer struggles to figure out the lane markings and whether the car next to me is actually a trash can or a motorcycle? Uh, I get that the conviction of Tesla that full self-driving is the future has to permeate all aspects of UI design for Tesla. But come on, there are things I want to see, like space on the right is limited and you're wasting all of this space uh, with stuff I don't care about. Forget the minimum mini consumption graph. How about navigation info? Right now, if I'm using Navi, I have to uh, I have compromised music selection space. If I bring up the music selection area, I won't see my upcoming exit. I should be able to bring stuff to the left, like navigation, like preferred buttons, such as child door locks and so on. I don't blame Tesla for their choices that are best for the majority. Uh, maybe the average driver doesn't care for a consumption graph or child uh, lock button, but I do. So let me tailor it for me. 
the third thing I would I would put in is assignable right hand roller on the steering wheel. Uh, this isn't so much about the, 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 the screen as it is about the wheel. You have these awesome rollers on the steering wheel that also rock left and right, and you can also press them so they're also buttons. So on the left is the one for the audio, and that's fine. On the right, it's for cruise control and autopilot when you're using cruise control and autopilot. The rest of the time, it does nothing. You can press it in as a button for voice command, uh, which I don't use and most people don't. But what if I want that button slash roller slash rocker to do something else the rest of the time? It would be handy if I could use it to alternate between the audio and the navigation screen. I would set it to the wiper control because to be honest, I'm not crazy about Tesla's tuning on the automatic wipers. It's often too fast or too slow considering the rainfall. Number four, don't lock too much when I'm around. Uh, this car has this feature where it locks when you walk away and that's great. Uh, but when I'm putting stuff in the car, it's constantly locking. When I'm putting someone in the car, for instance, such as my, my, my child, uh, as I go around to the driver's seat, it turns off the audio, it turns off the HVAC, can prevent it from locking when you walk away altogether at select addresses such as your home. That's not what I want. I just want it to uh, wait a little longer uh, or expect me to get a little further away from the car before locking up. Uh, the other idea that's related to that that would be cool is if my Samsung watch or any Android or Apple watch or whatever could have smart controls for the car come up on your wrist when, when you're near the car. That'd be really cool. And I'd, I think that would really kind of end the era of the physical key. Uh, last thing on this topic is Ford's combination to unlock thing, you know, it lights up by the door sill and you can put in a combination to get in the car. I think that's really cool. And I don't know why any other automaker uh, has not embraced that, or at least no mainstream automakers that I know about. Uh, Tesla should. You know, sometimes your phone's battery has died, and and or you just forgot to grab your phone. Uh, I realize that would require new hardware, and it doesn't belong in this video, but it's a thought. Number five, YouTube music. I, I'm obviously a heavy YouTube user, and I pay for YouTube Premium, which among other things give me gives me access to YouTube's music streaming, and it's basically like a Spotify alternate alternative. Tesla's theater mode has a decent YouTube app that you can use when you're parked, but and even that can be improved. But what I really want is uh, to use YouTube music while I drive. I don't care about the other streaming and the tune-in radio and whatever. YouTube music should be available uh, natively. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're enjoying this so far, by the way, please. Uh, number six, prompt me for a slip start or a snow mode. Um, I can decline or confirm. The car knows the outside temperature and technically it might even know the weather with enhanced connectivity or whatever. Uh, other cars place the driving mode right front and center near the shifter. So with the minimalism of the Model Y, that sort of thing gets buried. Software should use the situation, the contextual awareness to bring options like that out to the forefront for me uh, when I might need it so that I can uh, consider enabling it should I want to. Number seven is sentry mode. Uh, there's a few problems here. The main problem I have is scrubbing along the timeline to see what happened in the recording is really finicky. I mean, a, a, there's, there should be a button to fast forward 10 seconds or 30 seconds or a few minutes. That would help. Uh, sometimes I try to pick a precise moment on the timeline and I just barely miss it and then I go back too far. And uh, Also, the viewer takes a long time to load, uh, sometimes more than others. And I think the battery penalty is just a little too high to always have sentry mode on. Uh, so, and lastly, it would be really nice if you could record audio. That would help me know what areas are interesting to watch. Uh, I wonder if it's possible from a hardware standpoint. Number eight, permitting others to drive without the key. Uh, this has been an issue for me a couple times. Uh, sometimes I need to leave my car with somebody, but I don't carry the key card with me to hand it to them. And I can't just leave uh, whomever I want to give the car to my phone because it's my phone. Uh, and Tesla already lets you remotely unlock the car why not let me remotely permit someone else to drive it sometimes too? Uh, maybe with a pin entry. Uh, the most recent example for me was when I took the car to get my winter rims put on. The tire shop guys needed to be able to drive the car in and out of the shop, but I couldn't leave them my phone. I had, I had forgotten the key card at home. So the new Mustang Mach-E is coming out and people like Doug DeMuro and Lou from Unbox Therapy are reviewing it. And from what I see, that car has got this feature. So think about it, Tesla, you don't want to be out Tesla by Ford. Number nine, cell phone left in vehicle alert. 
other cars do this. You know, you're about to get out of the car and it tells you that your mobile is still in the car. With the Model 3's upgraded center console, which is almost certainly coming to the Model Y, this might be redundant because they did away with the cover on top of your phone charging area. But with my Model Y, I can cover it up, uh, and I often do, and it's happened that I forget it in there, and, and the reminder would be good, uh, especially considering your phone is the key. So if I leave it in there, I've left the car unlocked too. Uh, maybe that's the reason why they got rid of the cover on the newer center consoles. Anyway, considering that the wireless charging pad on my Model Y is actually not very good at all if you have a, a case with even some thickness, uh, I can't rely on the car actually knowing that the phone is there because it doesn't charge it half the time and, and I may, there may or may not even be feedback from the charger to the computer to tell it that it's charging. Uh, so this may not be in the cards. Number 10, my last one is scheduled preconditioning of the cabin with verification. So basically I have a very regular schedule. I go to work at eight-ish and I leave at six-ish. And we get, we, we get all four seasons in Toronto. So it's really hot in July, August, and it's freezing cold from November through to April. So I'm always preconditioning the cabin. And it's one of my favorite selling points of the car because I'm, I'm never too hot or too cold at the start of the drive. And that kind of makes it okay that I don't have a heated steering wheel because everything else is perfectly temperature uh, set when I get in the car. Uh, the problem is it's not a fun process to do this because you have to launch the app on your phone. Uh, you have to remember to do that. You have to wait for 5 to 15, sometimes longer, as the app wakes the car up. Uh, and uh, once a week on average, I'll say it takes several minutes where I have to restart my phone altogether. Now, I don't need the car to actually wake up. I already know that I want to send the command to precondition and my decision isn't going to depend on whether the car tells me what the interior temperature is or the battery level. I know I want a precondition. So don't wait, don't wait for me to see that the car has woken up. I should be able to send the command that preconditioned the car. And even better would be if the app could check in with me as a notification 15 minutes before my uh, drive uh, or when it thinks I'm going to drive to see if I want to precondition the cabin. And I'll say yes or no. And, or if I say nothing, then it's a no. If I say yes, then you can precondition the car. And this way I'll never forget and I'll never sit around waiting for the car to wake up. Is that a great idea? I think it is. Anyway, I know some of these things are super picky uh, and I know I should go without saying that the Tesla user experience is phenomenal and it's got great conveniences and features that I did not know I even want and now I don't want to give them up and I can't help but ask for more, especially because I think they're listening. Tesla has been very open to feedback. They've incorporated a lot of things. Uh, that they've, they've heard their, their drivers want. Now, I don't know if they'll read the comments section, but I'd really appreciate it if you could let me know down there if you agree or disagree with any of these and add in your ideas, of course, or just call me mean names, especially if my suggestions already been addressed somehow and, and I'm silly for not knowing about it. It is YouTube after all, so if you're being courteous, you're probably doing it wrong. Please like and subscribe. I'm trying to reach 500 subs, and thanks for watching.